Hello and welcome to the Psychic Stories podcast, encouraging conversations about mental health. Today I'm speaking to Ella Greenwood. Ella is a filmmaker, mental health activist and an ambassador for teen mental health charity STEM4. Ella, good morning, how are you? Morning, yeah, I'm really good this morning actually. Good, good to hear. Um, we had a little chat earlier, both of us did seem rather perky. Yeah, I mean it's 10am, I feel like I'm <laughs> ready for the day. <laughs> So um, the goal of today is to have an open and honest conversation about your mental health journey and to get some insight into the tools and tips that have helped you along the way. And by discussing your journey, we hope to share and normalize conversations about mental health as often people are not alone in these experiences. Does that sound good to you? Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, I, I would love to hear more about your mental health journey. I think it's probably fair to say, start off with um, that you have been, a, you, you're a filmmaker, um, but perhaps all your life, you'll, 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 you'll give us that story. But from the age of 18 and 19, you produced a short film called 40 Roots, which really um, um, uh, put forward the kind of a very compassionate view of teenage mental health and perhaps the disconnect between what parents perceive and what what children perceive at the, well, I say children teenagers perceive at the same time yeah no so um I sort of always loved films absolutely love just going to the cinema that'd be my favorite thing to do um and knew that I wanted to work somehow in the film industry and I thought for a long time that it was just as an actor and that would be like my main passion and yeah. I've sort of had an agent from a young age and been auditioning and that's sort of like working on different projects. And, so it's um, always been what you what you've thought about and what you want to do. And it, it was from a yeah. young age, how old? I mean, I'd say like as soon as I knew what acting was, like yeah, I remember yeah. not knowing what it was and watching like high school musical and just being like, what is that? Like I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then yeah, like so from a really young age, mm. and then it's only recently that I started filmmaking so you know more behind the scenes yeah. um yeah as a young teen I really struggled with my mental health it was something that just I don't know like I don't know exactly when I started or mm. sort of how long it was just it seemed like such a a huge part of my life and that was just sort of only my life for that for that moment in time mm. um and yeah and then when I decided to do filmmaking and to tell my own stories and make my own films I wanted it to be on something that I could share you know experiences that I had that I thought would be useful to sort of write about and um, create work about that so that's sort of how I started with Faulty Roots. And, and I think like you said like that communication of those stories from a very personal perspective I assume like it it, it, it allows you to explore some of the really kind of complicated emotions because very naturally we talk about mental health it's, it's it's in our head it's in our bodies it's it's how we feel and perceive the world right so being able to communicate that to 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 not only like an adult audience but actually to a to a younger audience hopefully might help them kind of say okay actually resonate with that and go okay I you know this is how I felt and actually this is how you know this is how the film dealt with it in a either positive or negative way whatever it is maybe that's a route that I could take as well yeah I mean I'd hope so like I think growing up for me like I just I did not know what mental health was I yeah. had absolutely no clue like I, I don't think I'd even heard those words like put together yeah. um, and so I just had no clue what I was going through and it took so long to sort of process that and I just think that you know more representation and sharing experiences mm. and just having characters that sort of go through things that maybe the audience have gone through or yeah. maybe will go through can just yeah really make a difference but mm. I hope it would anyway and and you and uh, now the question not not meaning to pry but obviously to open up the conversation when you were when you said you were struggling from a from a young age like was there a specific moment event that really kind of where where this 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 kind of this kind of you know maybe low mood or sadness or or anxiety it where, where it started to manifest itself uh, and it would be really interesting to hear that kind of journey of how you how you've come to where you are now which uh, you know is a you know is an inspirational and, and confident woman right thanks um i it's so interesting like for me there was just no explanation and nothing had changed like mm. That's why I just, I really didn't know. I thought I was just sort of growing up and like, oh, that's who I was becoming, I guess. Cause it was about, I think it was probably around 13, 14. Um, 
and yeah like I just had no clue what I was going through but I just didn't seem to enjoy anything anymore or you know everything just seemed so hopeless and it just the day sort of dragged on and I just I didn't feel like myself and mm. I didn't feel like my past self but I thought oh you know well is this just me now like is yeah. this just a part of growing up and I'm just suddenly like not happy like is that going to be my adult yeah. <laughs> personality? Um, well, which is a worry right when you extend your life out into you know I think it's 27,000 days is like 75 years right when you extend you know from the age of 13 14 you extend your life out like that and you're thinking is this what life's going to be you can you can yeah. have some pretty dark times especially I mean because like at 13 I don't know I still you're still young and like I was still so excited about everything mm -hmm. before and to just go from that to sort of all of a sudden like nothing yeah. seems exciting like I was like oh my god I'm in for a, <laughs> a really long ride here. yeah absolutely and and did you did you have kind of friends that were going through something similar is it something that you're able to kind of share or back then because you know you know I know when I was 13 14 you didn't really talk about it um, to be honest, no, like it, mm. it took so long for me to like to even tell myself what I was going through. And then yeah. it took so long to sort of, I only sort of admitted it to my parents out of, like, I just had to, like, you know, it wasn't like I made the decision to, because I felt like I should. Mm. And like with my friends, like, again, I just, I didn't speak about it with them. I didn't speak about it with anyone. Cause it was still the more that I sort of realized what I was going through the more I sort of looked into it and the more I realized mm. how stigmatized it was and how yeah. I just I did not want to associate myself with that and I didn't want other people to associate myself yeah. with that so yeah like I just I didn't really speak about it with anyone mm. and I think it's a it's a it's a fine balance isn't it because like as part of our the our psychic community all of us within the community have suffered from mental ill health that's one stage in our lives and going through it all personally you realize when you go inside and start to ask some of those kind of like deeper questions that I think you can convince yourself very quickly that conversations with other people won't help you. Like it's a, I've got to do this on my own. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is that, yeah, whilst you can help yourself, there are some times when you do need to reach out and might get even just to friends and family, but also to something maybe a little bit more professional, more intensive. Did you have an experience of, of, of that where it sounds like it was quite isolating and and how did you kind of emerge out of that? Uh, is it something that just happened or, was there, or, or were there things that you were able to do and understand about yourself, which started to kind of really kind of make you feel hopeful and optimistic? Again, like, I don't know when I sort of first started struggling and why, and I don't mm. know how I, I sort of got better too. Mm. Like, I think something that helped was just acceptance and it was just yeah. knowing what I was going through you know that can it can make such a huge difference just to accept that and to also know that like just keeping in mind like it won't always be like this mm -hmm. um and it's not you permanently now like <laughs> where nothing excites you like I yeah. think just keeping that in mind and sort of being aware of oh I feel bad today but this is why and it won't always be like that it's just those yeah. small little things that you have to remember and you have to sort of keep going over I guess yeah. like it's forming those habits isn't it and and is it something I mean did you come to those those thoughts of the wise on your own was it just purely yourself or was it a lot of research education um to be honest it, it was just me like I didn't that's amazing get any help like because the mm. You know obviously I went to like different doctors and hospitals but the wait list was so long and I didn't yeah went to a few different like therapists and I didn't like them at all and I just yeah. didn't it's not I personable felt, is it no and I just felt like it even from like the the actual legit help that I received from people who were trained to do that I just felt like it was very much they were talking it down it was like oh have you have you fallen out with any friends um mm. you know have you is school stressful have you have you broken up with someone and I was like mm. well no none of those mm. things like like you're supposed to be telling me why I'm feeling like this not yeah. yeah I don't know I just I really didn't like sort of any of the yeah like the professional help that I yeah that was given to me and so I sort of had to just do it myself I guess mm. 
But that, that kind of motivation to do it yourself, like that's got to come from a place where you're like, I want to feel better. I want to feel more optimistic. And like, how did you, you know, cause, cause, and that's a powerful thing, you know, when you're feeling low and you're feeling bad, to have the motivation to be able to even do that is, you know, even to get out of bed is hard sometimes, right? So, you know, it, it's, it, do you think that's something innate with you that you are like, right, I'm going to sort myself out, hard graph, this is what's going to take, and I'm going to do it? Yeah, I think so. I think I've always been someone, I always love to be doing stuff, like with my work, I probably work way too much, um, and I've always been very, like, proactive with what I want to do in my career, and, I've always had that like I yeah. just I like to be doing stuff and I like to be sort of moving forward and you know yeah doing different things and so it was sort of like well it will be productive like I need to get better to be even more productive and to sort of really do what I want to do so like I'll just I'll just try and yeah sort of, yeah and, and and you and that momentum starts to gather because you start to do something and then you think, hold on, yeah, like, I feel a sense of satisfaction with whatever task I'm doing, even if it's something simple, like getting dressed or whatever it is, or, or get, 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 you know, like, you know, the, the, this morning I got out of bed, I'm like, oh, I'm not feeling too great, but I was like, right, have a shower, like, get dressed, do my hair, whatever it's going to be, and then you kind of look in the mirror and kind of go, okay, cool, yeah, it's all going to be okay today, because, you know, that's, you know, you know, the, the, in my view, that's what it has to be, you know what I mean, it's like, no, I'm, I'm not going to be sad today, I'm just, I'm just going to get out and do stuff yeah i mean because it's more it's sort of like well it's it's down to me it's not obviously my fault what i'm going through but at the same time like i just wanted to make the decision that i can have more power over it and i can't yeah. like i don't want to let it just control me and so it's sort of that too like just getting on with it and you know yeah, getting through this day even if you don't enjoy it, even if it's hard like you're still getting through it and then there'll be days where it'll be better so and like you said, it's it turns mental health. Some it's a lifestyle, isn't it? Like because that's by its very nature, that's what it is. Like it is your life. So acknowledging and understanding those nuances of the ups and the downs and the waves that come on. Just like you said, like at age thirteen, it just came on. Like there might have not have been a reason. It just happened. And to 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 be so self aware now to say that when the clouds do come or the storms do come, that they will pass. And sometimes just accepting, just hey, I'm just going to let them roll through. And it, yeah, I'm you know it's going to be bad for a few days, but I know there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, definitely. And it yeah, it's just knowing that I think and knowing. And also just the more that it's spoken about, whether it's, you know, amongst friends in schools, mm. in the media, like the more it, it just does feel okay. And I think it, it makes such a huge difference just to know that one other person like you has gone through that. Um, and that, yeah, you're not just alone and, you know, you don't know why or what you're going through or how you're going to get through it. Like it, it makes such a huge difference. Mm. And I assume that's sort of that kind of passion is is why you became an ambassador for STEM4. And and please feel free to shout out STEM4. You know, they are they're an awesome organization, you know, supporting and dealing with with teenage mental health across the country. It's that, you know, they're an awesome organization. And also, you know, uh, started by a doctor, clinically based, evidence based. That's something we fully support. Yeah, they're they're just amazing. Like I the thing I always say of them is like they're exactly what I what I would have needed. Um, just the way I think the way that they approach it is so refreshing too. Like with all of the apps that they have, that's that's amazing because you can just you know people can get them instantly. It's not a three month wait list. It's not you know exactly. it's not oh I have to tell everyone that I'm struggling to even get help. It's no, it's it's right there for you um, when and if you need it and yeah like I just and the, and the fact that they focus on early intervention I think is so mm. needed again because there's still such a thing where it's like well you can only get help if you're absolutely at your lowest point and you're um you know you've been struggling for so long and you just there's no other option like no it, it's early intervention is it can make such a huge difference to so many people's lives so yeah like I'm so proud to be an ambassador for them they're just the best and with and with um, you know, like you said, talking about that early intervention, like there's something really to be said about you know, it, and you know, for myself looking at it, like I'm 35 now, like the, the way you articulated it, it's something that you wish you would have had when you were growing up, like 
that's exactly that really encapsulates it right like you kind of you want you, you want to kind of uh, be aware and understand the ways that you can build up your resilience so that when the storms do come you are able to cope with it because that's what it's about right like you know life is about coping you know and whilst that sounds quite depressing but like it, it is about coping but you know you can cope happily that's the other thing as well um, and you've got to have these tools everywhere these mental tools to just you know just like you know like to, to fight off the storms when they come or fight off the daggers when they try to get you and it's a it's a mental battle yeah no i i mean that that's definitely like i think if people if i'd even known about mental health and i probably like if, if i was younger and they were talking to me i'd probably think oh well that's never going to affect me like okay great like I have that knowledge now but it, it won't be relevant but like you don't know and I people I think it just it, it can affect so many people and again like people that don't have any experience with it just really struggle to understand it because it is so like it's just not talked about and then mm. when you go through it, even still a lot of people are like oh well oh no it's fine like I'm, I'm not depressed like it it's just mm. no I'll get through it and then I'll get through this day and then I'll get through this day like without even accepting it so mm. like just having people be more aware of it from the start really yeah. and yeah it will just make such a huge difference and it's interesting you talk about like that that, that stigma that stigma is you know we they talk about you know that no one size fits all mental health and there's a huge stigma around mental health like despite the fact that the world has been talking about mental health, especially in the last year, but for the last, let's say, decade. Do you feel that we are, it seems like we're on a positive path, but it still seems to me that there are still a lot of people who are really, really struggling? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely talked about more. Um, and I think I think progress is slow still. Mm. Uh, and people are becoming more accepting, but then there's still such a lack, like if, you know, you look at the facts, the sort of the Harry and Meghan interview and people mm -hmm. denying her saying that she had suicidal thoughts, like that just, it seems like no progress has been made. And mm. sort of some of the reactions to that and to mental health in general, again, it's, I think it's hard for people to realize that even people in like a higher position, say in the spotlight, who, mm. who are maybe wealthy, who have had a good career, like they, again there's still that divide like oh well they can't be sad like they've got no reason to be sad like yeah. that that's not fair like no we don't accept that but it, it doesn't work like that and I think there's still so many little things like that that just people don't realize so yeah I mean progress has definitely been made but mm. it needs to be made a lot quicker and I think that's an interesting point like the a lot of people who would say that let's say someone of wealthy and privilege who you know you know what do they have to be sad about or you know they don't you know they they don't deserve the or the the, the happy you know they do des you know they don't deserve the happiness of what they're getting and like it's it, it goes the other way the person who's actually thinking that is then thinking, okay, in order for me to be happy, I need to be wealthy and privileged, right? But that's not, if there's one thing which is pervasive, it is our mental health. And mental health does not discriminate by gender, by sex, by class, what or wealth, whatever it is, like it affects all of us. And it affects all of us actually in quite some common ways and the conversations we're having on, on the podcast, like I'm talking to, you know, I'm talking to you in, in, in London, right? The conversation we're having is not dissimilar from someone I'm, you know, someone I spoke to in Canada or the African American community in the Deep South in Texas. Like we're having the same conversations, and that's why I think there's a lot of hope because there's some there's commonalities. Like we are experiencing the same feelings in different situations and sometimes some really tragic situations, but we're still feeling things that we can empathize with. Like I can have a conversation with you and I get when you're saying I, ha I felt low, I felt depressed, I felt anxious. I can, I, I can understand that. And the tools that perhaps help that are also common. Yes, intensive, but like you said, there were some you know, things that really helped you. Little things like acceptance, maybe gratitude. That doesn't cost money, right? Mm -hmm. like you don't put a price on acceptance like you just need to go through a process to understand how you can start to accept things in life yeah I mean like that's something that I love so much with 
with filmmaking and with sharing films like with false roots that, that was the first film that i made and it mm. was very much about um you know a young teenage girl that yet yeah, there were people who were so far from being any having any similarities to her that that said you know i really related to that and i really sort of understood what she was going through and it brought mm. me comfort and i think yeah like obviously everyone is has so many differences as, a, as an individual but there are things that people go through that are similar with mental illnesses and, and with mental health in general and I think that's something that can be focused on even more because that's an that's a that's a nice thing that people from across the world have yeah. sort of things that they can relate to with each Absolutely. other I think that's an amazing thing and do you like you talk about when you were when you were you know writing filming um 40 Roots was that process quite cathartic in itself did it enable you to explore some of the emotions you know very much like journaling right you 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 in some respects I, you, you wrote a structured and staged journal about conversations of how people are feeling and is that is that something that was 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 therapeutic for yourself I think so with making the short um it was it was still sort of like the first time that I think a lot of people around me would have even have realized that I'd struggled um, mm. and sort of what that meant to me and how that changed certain things. And so it was definitely scary mm. that working on the feature version of Folgy Roots has, I mean, I've loved it, like because I've got to delve into those thoughts that you have and the things that you experience and the ups and the downs even more and just to really like with, obviously with a short it's hard trying to yeah. fit everything in but with yeah. a feature like being able to to yeah focus on the relationships and all of that it is I've absolutely mm. loved it and it's been such an amazing thing just to write about it yeah. and yeah like it it is it really helps but also vice versa like making a short and, and I, I'm not a filmmaker so I, you know I certainly don't know anything about making films but I so making a, a short I assume compared to a feature like obviously the feature has so much more depth and so much more layers like to me that sounds more complicated whereas actually like what you're saying as well is that making the short on such a big topic and trying to articulate everything you want to within those you know within those minutes is very hard at the same time Mm, yeah it was hard trying to <laughs> fit it all in um but then again like I've done I'm shooting another short this month and I've just done another one I've like I've done a various other shorts on mental health and of different aspects and it is really nice because you can just get a glimpse into different characters lives and their different experiences of mental health in certain situations and to just you know just having if people watch that and it's 10 minutes and it makes a difference like I think that that's that could be incredible and yeah shorts mm -hmm. are an amazing way just to show sort of the little things and to try and change people's opinions like yeah. in in a very short it's not so much of a commitment as watching a whole feature length film so and and do you with those when you you know when you first did 40 roots with the character you played you know was that you in real life in some respect um not really no uh i think like when i write i they're not about me they're not mm. about um uh, my sort of things that i've gone through but the way that i talk about mental health and some the way that the characters think about things in their lives in relation to their mental health is very much similar yeah that makes sense yeah yeah absolutely and I suppose when you're writing about those relational experiences you can really only go from the experiences that you have anyway right yeah yeah I mean it will all be influenced by me whether I realize it or not yeah Actually, yeah, I was, I, I was going to say on, on the side, we talk, you know, to talk a little bit about kind of quantum physics and things like that. And it suddenly reminded me that there is a, you know, there are people working on research where there's a link between the mind and quantum physics as well. And what you just said about the, the fact that you can't separate yourself from the kind of that kind of um, experience is fun it seems fundamental in the world it seems something that actually every experience we have is somehow interconnected with each other and i'm yeah. sorry to, sorry to go metaphysical but i assume when you are writing you've got to consider these kind of different relations and how everything connects to each other because when you see it on the screen it's very easy to see how there is disconnectedness where you wanted connectedness yeah yeah and just 
again, like sort of, I've like with the films, I focus on diff very different characters in very different situations, but they will still all have similarities um, despite their circumstances being different, despite their sort of relationships being different, their ages, their, mm -hmm. you know, their backgrounds, like there will still be those similarities and it's sort of seeing those come through either yeah. intentional or unintentional where, where I've worked, so which is, yeah, really interesting. And on, if you don't mind me asking a practical question about your kind of the mental health side. So you've chosen to go into a, a, um, a career, so filmmaking, which I assume is self-employed. Now, self-employed is known to be difficult. Yeah. You know, you know I'm self-employed. It's hard day in, day out, not having that security. And it can really impact your, your, your mental health. Is that, is that something that you, is on your mind? Is it something that you struggle with? Or is it something that you just don't know any different and you're just going to go out and get it done? I mean, again, like from sort of a young age and sort of the main, the only way that I've worked is like that. And it is a yeah. job that can be confirmed last minute or cancelled or you know it's hard like it that's and that's sort of something that I really want to focus on as well like with making the film and with all of my work that I, I know it's so hard for for freelancers and for people in the industry yeah. it's extremely difficult like it's a difficult career and, like it will have an impact on your mental health so mm. sort of doing as much as possible to make sure that yeah people are still taking care of their mental health mm. but yeah, for me, it's sort of all that I've known and I love my work so much that, I don't know, it's just sort of like, well, it is hard. It's not as sort of safe and reliable as other careers, but I, but I love what I'm doing. Yeah. So. And at the same time, do you look at the alternative and you think, I don't want to do that. That's 100% what I do know. I mean, yeah, I've never really been <laughs> an alternative. <laughs> I just can't imagine like I just love film and I love like the entertainment industry I just yeah I, I can't really imagine any different and and you know like you said like it is it is it is tricky at times like especially when things are you know come up you know come up at the last minute or cancel at the last minute like to you know to you know people are in our audience who are freelancers maybe they're in you know maybe they're maybe they're actors themselves um or just or regular self you know regular self-employed doing something you know in in services like how do you cope? Are there some tools and tips that have helped you along the way that you find on a day-to-day -day basis really help you to, to kind of cope with, you know, you know, some unexpected things and uncertain things that happen? Um, I guess, like, it can get, yeah, really stressful and at times and just, like, uncertainty and stuff like that, but it's just, I don't know, I just guess just thinking that you will be okay and that, like... Mm you know, you can distance yourself from everything. Sometimes you're also immersed in, in a project or if something goes wrong, that it's just that that's it. Like that's sort of the end of the world, but it's, mm. it's yeah, just distancing yourself and saying what it is. That's just one career, I guess. And it's just one, like it's just process what you're going mm. through and it, you know, it, it doesn't have to be the end of the world. Um, and just, yeah, like it's really hard when things aren't certain in the future, but also taking the time for yourself. Like I always mm. got into such a habit where I was like, I can't, like, I, I can't possibly go away. I can't go to that party. Like what if, what if I get a, an audition and I, and I miss it or what if a mm. job comes up and I, I can't do it. Like make, yeah, making sure that you're obviously, you've got enough to live happily, but at mm. the same time, making sure that you focus on yourself and that, you spend time with your family and you spend time with your friends and if you miss something that could help your career majorly like you know career is one thing but also those around you is is another thing that you need to and yourself like you do need to take care of and mm. but like that's important time too and i suppose like you know if you haven't got your 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 if your head's not in a good place there's going to be no career right or there's going to be a career that might be quite unexpected in a negative way yeah so it's building up that foundations and that of that resilience to be able to kind of you know to, you know to to be able to build that kind of sustainable and also as well I assume when you're going to auditions or when you are going to you know let, let's say you're you're you, you've made a short and you're selling it you know the production rights whatever it is you've got to go into a room confident right like mm, yeah and, and passionate 
definitely like passion is the most important thing I think well what I've experienced like passion is what gets you far um but also yeah like I think so many people would if they're really struggling with their mental health would go five days sort of getting half the work done and just struggling through it rather than taking one day to themselves recharging and then yeah. powering through those other four days and it's still something that people yeah like people just don't really think about and don't consider doing so I think that's something that again is important like in the industry mm. with every industry really in a in a, in a, in a I suppose a, a question that sprung to mind when you were saying that is because like yourself you've got the skills to act, right? Can you, in a situation where you're struggling, can you act your way out of it? Can you act passionate? Can you act engaged? And, you know, is there a, is, is there a kind of like some mental tricks that you can, that, that, that you use or you can use where you're, you might be in a really low place, but actually getting yourself into, an, into a new character, even just for yourself, can be therapeutic and can actually work yeah I mean for me like I like at the minute like, I love everything at the minute and I'm not acting yeah. <laughs> like happy or passionate about things but it I think for so long like why people just wouldn't realize that I was and I think I don't just think it's sort of actors or people you know who, who like being creative it's I think most people act most people yeah. you have no clue that they're struggling and you yeah. know you'd say have you ever acted to, you would you ever be interested in performing they'd be like absolutely not I can't do it but yet sort of they spend every day acting um and I guess like for me it does it does help because sometimes if you're in a, a bad mood and you, you sort of have to be in a happy mood it, it can I don't know you can just I guess fall into it and then forget mm. that you're in a, a bad mood but I think for for a lot of people like it just it can be so draining and it it doesn't help because then those around you just you know they have no clue and they can't help you and mm. you sort of I guess by doing that you're sort of downplaying it yourself as well mm. so yeah it's a mixture of both how do you then so if we're if if the world is encouraging us to be our authentic selves right how 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 do we, if we are acting on a day-to-day -day basis, which I completely agree with you, life is a stage, so to speak. Um, I have no audience, that's the difference. <laughs> um, how do you kind of retain that kind of authenticity of yourself, but then at the same time, acknowledging that you might have some different cloaks or masks or faces or characters that you go into, like are all of those authentic versions of yourself? I mean, suddenly it sounds like a really complicated philosophical question, but like from your perspective, you know, is it, is it, you know, is the, is the most authentic version of you just one version? That's baby, that's what I'm going to say. Or can you have multiple versions of it? I think you can have multiple. I think, you know, it depends who you're with and what the situation is like, and people, you know, and maybe one day you feel like, someone else and the other you, you feel like a completely different person I think that's okay but I think in terms of having to act it's there is a difference between feeling low and still being able to sort of perk yourself up and get yeah. on with it and then feeling so low that you're put in that situation and the slightest thing will just cause you to break down like mm. there is a difference between that and again that's something that is hard to tell and it's hard for people to realize but one is sort of yeah you, you're able to get on with it and it may help you it may cheer you up and the other is just no like you need to cancel that plan you need yeah. to take that time for yourself um and just yeah like just be what you're feeling in that moment rather than forcing yourself not to and i think you know what you're saying you, you say about you know taking that time every day to reflect or, or just to be be with yourself like in 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 that kind of in that in, oh, sorry, in that moment is that like what do you do in those in that time is it something where you're like right it's going to be you know do you do it at the beginning of the day so if your day is a bit chaotic you're like right I've always saw I've already I've always done it in the morning I've, I've always kind of laid my foundation or is it something where you think actually this is what I need now so I'm just going to park it go away 50 minutes and and you do something else well, what do you do in that reflection time I mean 
for me like I'm really bad with just having a massive to-do list and yeah. getting to the end of the day and then just seeing it and thinking oh god I've got today's stuff and then tomorrow's stuff to do now um and yeah it's just again like just just going, I need to put that on my mind. Like, I'm not going to work now. I'm not going to do them now. So I don't need to think about them now. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm literally, I'm not going to do that to-do list right now. So why stress about it? Why think about it? And just... But yeah. it's hard to do that when you've got the compulsion for the list to be yeah, done. Yeah, it is. But it's like, I just try and think, well, I'm not literally going to do it. So I don't need to be thinking about it now. And it's mm. just putting it out of your mind, thinking, well, that's tomorrow. Like, I will tackle that tomorrow um yeah. and that's okay yeah because yeah like why sit here and think about it but not doing anything like that just literally doesn't make any sense and then sometimes mm. like, if I'm sitting and working and I'm like I've got so many things to do and I don't know what to do and I'll just be sitting there like procrastinating like oh god I don't know what to do but it does just help like to just take 10 minutes to just take even five minutes and just not think about mm. any of them and then mm. come back and you know you'll be like okay well I feel like doing this one now um and again it, it's more productive like it's more yeah. productive to take five minutes where you're not working rather than spend 20 trying to yeah. think about how to work <laughs> and it's amazing it's something simple as if as walking away from that list going outside for 10 minutes and going for a little walk you come back and suddenly that your perception shifted and changed like and you know people are you know people on the podcast are always talking about going for walks in nature you know and you know in london there's lots of parks so just there's something apparently very very good and it's, it's evidence-based of acknowledging the patterns in nature it makes you feel good so having that as a little tool in yourself is something and i think people during lockdown that's all we've really been able to do anyway but it seems to have helped a lot of people mm, yeah and i mean for me like sometimes i just even like i'll try listening to a song and i and it and i'll still be thinking about stuff and yeah you know there's just that it, it takes that extra bit of effort sometimes for me to focus on the song rather yeah. than to have the song distract me like I literally need to like concentrate on listening yeah. to the song <laughs> um but it you know I get there and it is it, it makes a difference so it's sort of again acknowledging that that's something that <laughs> I can sometimes struggle with just yeah. not being so focused on my work but yeah, like I'm aware of that, so. But th th there's and that moment in that song where you do disconnect. You can actually feel it, can't you? You yeah. can feel those those worries or whatever you've got in your mind just, uh, and the only way I can describe it is they lift. They lift into a cloud and yeah. they're not affecting me. Those talons are not in me anymore and I'm just immersed in whatever I'm doing. And it's relaxing. Yeah, it is, and like, well, like I, fairly relaxed I think that's something that I need to work on <laughs> more um but it does like it just it makes such a difference and again like it's it's something the same with mental health like it's so hard you know people can't see it that's always been like oh physical pain is so much takes so much more seriously because you know what it is and you can see yeah. it and that's the same like with the effects that relaxing has and of taking that time to yourself like you can't really see the effect but it does have an effect and it's just like it, it maybe it'll be long term maybe it'll make you feel different right now but it, it's so important and it mm. will really help and, and I think like you said when you were when you were much younger and you first saw you know professional help and you, and you were like actually the waiting list was too long I'm not I'm not resonating and, and you know and, and have a relationship with these people they don't understand what I'm going for quite patronizing in some respects like that that appro that approach it's not dissimilar i mean it's not that it's not the first time i've heard that i'm actually that's probably the more common you know version of what what you hear when people go you know go and see you know interact with the health service and they're really it and i know there's a lot of a lot of a lot of charity there's a lot of money being poured into mental health but perhaps physical health is I, it seems to be easier to deal with, i.e. something physical, we can fix it. Mental health is very, very difficult. And we, w there is a lot of research out there and there is a huge amount of work on the mind and neuroscience, but it's still very slippery. And the reality is, is we still really don't know how this works up here. I mean, we try and cope. And, you know, uh, um, um, someone had on the podcast recently told me that in, in, I think it was last year, the UK prescribed, so I think it was 80 million um mental health drugs um, and I, in a year 
Mm. And from what I'm hearing in terms of during the pandemic, especially when people are not trying to come into, you know, into doctors or hospitals, you know, there's a lot of the mental health medicines which are being prescribed yeah. in, in, you know, and I'm, in my opinion, very, very fast. And that's a, that seems to be a symptom of, okay, we don't, we can't cope with whatever is going on. We can cope with things physically, but people's mental states, we're really struggling. And the fact is, is it seems like there was a crisis before the pandemic. And now there's a pandemic which has altered our lives. What the hell's going to come afterwards, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, people were struggling so much before, but the pandemic will have an effect on everyone's mental health because life, you know, it's been a crazy year. Like, it's been a hard year. It's been so difficult. Like, you can't, the year can't have made you happy every single day. Like, it, Mm. you know, it, it will have such a huge effect. And I think sometimes even now like people have acknowledged that like the media for example have said well teenagers are really struggling um or people are really struggling but it's like they're just telling us facts and not like okay Mm. here's how workplaces are going to help this here's how we're going to make a difference here's what you know here's what we can do it's just more oh there is a need for help but we don't know how to help yeah and i think people are coming to terms with or and i don't think they're liking it that they have a responsibility and it seems really bizarre to say it that we have a responsibility for each other as human beings and in the workplace it sounds ridiculous that we're having a chat and and the workplace might not support people's mental health or might be stigmatized so for example you mentioned you know the harry and megan interview and you know you know and she talked she talked about her suicidal thoughts like imagine that in the workplace as well like there's a lot of workplaces which won't acknowledge that and say and and will stigmatize you for that um and it seems now that people need to face up to the fact that the reality is, is that we've all got responsibility for each other. And if someone is struggling and suffering and they struggle and suffer on your watch and you don't help, then that's on you. Yeah. And again, it's like, it's so tricky because no one, it's so stigmatized like that, that no one says when they're struggling and then you yeah. don't know just how many people are struggling. Um, and it just becomes a very much, well, that person isn't going to say that person isn't going to say that person isn't going to say so then you feel like you're just completely the only one and completely like no I just can't no one else would be able to understand what I'm going through no one else would be able to relate like it's just such a it's just such a tricky cycle like that and it's you know we're sort of stuck in that in that sense it's and I suppose it's about creating those spaces where where you're comfortable like the conversation we're having now like it's not an interview this is a chat you know, fly on the wall chat between two people who are interested in mental health and are giving each other the space to be able to kind of voice, you know, their concerns. But it's very tricky to do that, you know, you know, you know, if with friends, with family, in a relationship, you've all got stuff going on and taking the time, not only for yourself, but taking the time to check in on others is fundamentally important. And, you know, as I say that, I know I don't do it enough to my friends or my family. I know that. But constantly reminding yourself that a little text a little phone call is something that can really really help someone's day especially if they're lonely right it does but i think there's still such a difficult thing like with if people ask you are you okay are you fine you would feel like a weirdo if you if you said well no actually i'm not like yeah if, yeah you, know, if you actually answered honestly you'd feel like you're the one who who is just being really strained and who yeah. is not who is not answering that because you know you'd say well like that's the incorrect answer to actually say to people well no I'm not or oh yeah, yeah. actually I am doing okay yeah. now before like to answer that question honestly seems like the incorrect response and yeah that's such an issue with that and, and and no one really wants to be the person who go yeah I'm feeling pretty bad like if someone goes how are you and you respond I mean the, you know the stock also yeah I'm fine thanks mate how are you like yeah you know perhaps they can say oh you sound a little bit yeah, you don't sound fine, you know, don't want to dig in, but it is like, but, but, but still, like, you know, I'm still conflicted in my mind. Like, you know, you know, um, imagine yourself, Ella, going to walking on the street, you know, just, just bumping into someone that you don't know very well. And someone's, you know, someone says, you know, you say, how are you? And then they're like, mm, I'm not great, actually. Like, despite the fact that we all want to be better people in terms of supporting people's mental health, there are situations where you don't want to hear that someone's struggling. 
And that's that's the reality. I don't like saying it, but that is the reality. And we can't always be those compassionate, empathetic people. The, those people who are, are amazing. But the reality is, is that, that it, it takes energy and proactiveness to be that, that person. But I think, like, especially if we're talking about those around you that, you know, I think people aren't used to spending that extra energy. Yeah. Really so. Asking it. And it's, you know, it's, it's sort of, you know, if you're not used to running five miles, then you have to maybe build up to it. You have yeah. to do a mile at a time. But, you, you know, how amazing to get there and to, to be able to run that five miles and to really be there for people. If it does take extra energy, then yeah. at the end of the day, like the difference that that can make and to just really be there for people. And sometimes as well, mm. it's, you know, not saying, OK, well, tell me everything then. Tell me every single detail, every single yeah. feeling It's well, if you feel like there is no other option, I will be there for you. Like, I am always here for you. Mm. Um, if you want to talk, that's okay. If you don't, that's okay too. Like, it's just, or, you know, let's go for a drink. Let's go for yeah. a coffee. And then, you know, we'll be in a position to both speak about how we're actually doing rather than just getting straight into it because of yeah. a sort of a, a more, an average comment that people say every day. You're not prepared to sort of, to just delve into it there mm. but if you sort of <laughs> arrange a time as a such then maybe yeah. that would be better too but 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 also as well if someone does ask you how you're doing and you're not you you, you can answer honestly can't you say yeah actually I you know I'm not too great today but you know I had a good day yesterday and I've got a few good days coming over so it's all going to be uh, you know I think it's you know I think I'm going to cope so actually that I think there's often a way of reframing things where you can be very honest but also give the signal that yeah you know I've I, I'm okay or you know I don't need to talk or if I want to talk you know it, it does seem to me and perhaps it's something about you know we were speaking in an earlier episode about um, kind of the kind of the loss of values potentially, you know, potentially in Britain but you know perhaps you know across many other countries but we're known as a country as, as people who stuff their emotions down yeah and that's, a, that's perhaps more a legacy now you know I think you know maybe a generational thing our parents grandparents and stuff but and they have their reasons for doing so. But now, I think it's like you said, it's about communication, articulation, it's understanding how to articulate, to communicate, saying, I'm fine, thank you. It doesn't take much mental capacity, right? But to go to articulate something in a way that is, okay, being honest, but at the same time is 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 maybe hopeful or, or optimistic or something is something that actually requires some thought and that's that's complicated and i suppose yourself in you know we, you know as as an actor yourself that that articulation of the language is something that i assume you're quite good at and i think like for me if like i've been speaking to some people recently and i can tell that they're tired and you know it's it's really hard this lockdown has been so hard and mm. it's just again like I would rather someone say to me, oh, you know what, I'm, no, I am tired. I'm not doing okay, rather than, because sometimes you can have those conversations and you're like, oh God, did I do something wrong? Like, yeah, are, yeah. are you not, like, I would rather have someone explain, no, like, I am tired. I just, I don't want to be in this meeting today. Like, it's nothing to do with you. Like, I think mm -hmm. just honesty is not, like, people just, aren't honest about that but I think sometimes it could be better like yeah. I would much rather know exactly what you are thinking right now and what you're going through rather than just everyone sort of like I don't know being weird robotic versions yeah. of themselves where it's sort of like oh is this are we not excited about this anymore do we not want to do this like yeah. what, what's going on and and I think like, it's a really good point like when you're especially in, in the in the in the kind of workplace as well you and I think you, but your workplace might be slightly different in the fact that all of you really want to be there you know what I mean it's your passion whereas sometimes you know you go in, you know into another workplace you're like mm, you know you know it pays me money but you know I'm not that bothered but actually having that honesty and just even articulating that honesty is like no it's nothing to do with you lot I'm just having a bit of a bad day yeah. and if someone then brings you a cup of tea you can't help and I'm smiling now you can't help but smile right you're like thank you you know what I mean like even the most pissed off person you know you know has you know that you know that reaching out and that kind of that kind of reaching out and that compassionate side will always warm you up like it is it seems to be in us human okay maybe if you're not a psychopath but you know there's not many of those around right but there's something about that that connection which does warm your soul and that's i think that's really nice and i love that it doesn't cost money either because 
there's so many things mental health things which are kind of you need to pay for and stuff but i my belief and psychic's belief is that we can do all this for, we can do a lot of this stuff for free yeah and, and it can make such a huge difference like those those little things can really just have such an impact yeah. um and sometimes they they don't work but but i feel often they do um and just yeah that's like just one of the most important things i think you can tell people is just that you are there for them and yeah. you are actually there for them and if yes if they well need said. something then then they can ask because again like i'm not really someone who asks often i don't mm. really ask for help ever i just sort of try and mm. hope that it goes well but mm. I, and again i think that's sort of something with mental health that people just were like well it's i will get through this like mm. i don't want to ask for help because i don't think i need it like it's just you know i'm people are probably struggling so much more than me like they are the ones that need the help but it's no like it's okay to ask for help yeah and, you know it's important to if you need it yeah ella honestly thank you so much for a fascinating and insightful conversation like we've covered you know i'd love to love to heard you know to, to have heard more about yourself um, um and you said when that cloud just you know descended on you age 13 and now like talking to you now like it seems well you know it seems like you've got everything together and everything going for you right you've got you know you've got a burgeoning career you've got award-winning films you've got a feature film coming out like it all seems pretty good but it also seems like i think rather than being you know too like you know preachy is you seems like you've learned the tools so that when the bad days come and the reality is is that they come for everyone that you can you you will cope and you will get through it which is awesome right yeah well <laughs> yeah i mean i think that i the more and the more that you talk about it and the more that you hear other people's experiences the more you learn those too yeah you learn the tools so yeah awesome ella thank you so much for your time i really appreciate it thank you cool and thank you to everyone listening you can su subscribe to us on most major podcast platforms youtube spotify and apple podcast to search for psychic community or psychic stories and will pop up and please do give us a rating if you like the show and to bore you with another wrap we do have a free psychic app for iphone and ipad a collection of interactive exercises tools and tips to help you boost your mental well-being the app enables you to build a personalized well-being toolkit to help you deal with life's ups and downs just to go to our to our website www.sidekick.org.uk and click the download now button in the header to take you to the app store. Ella, thank you so much again. Thank you.